Good morning and welcome back YouTube and God bless all of you who have found this video. I hope the Lord is blessing you all. I hope he's keeping you all healthy and happy. I realized that I've been posting more in the community tab than actually reading and recording. Faith comes by hearing and not everyone reads well. So if I'm not reading to those that can't read well, what does that benefit them? Excuse me also if I stutter and mutter. I'm still dealing with a, uh, a broken heart. I lost my friend of seven years, my dog who had been with me every single day. She slept with me every single night. She was my companion. She's dearly missed. But this isn't about me. I want to start recording and reading from some of the posts I put in the community tab. I, uh, for those that can't read well. Maybe that's why I'm not getting as much interaction as I should be. So, uh, they're not going to be in any particular order. I'm just going to pick from them and I'm going to read from them. And as I explained, as I hear the scriptures, I write them down in the notepad in my phone and then I, in the order that I receive them, and then I relay them to you. Um, I know I don't explain a whole lot of how I do this. Because I don't want to come across as if I'm boasting in myself. I just want you to hear the words and then see for yourself and take away from whatever it is you hear and take it to the Lord and, and let him guide you. You know, it says that those of us that choose or that seek to do this, we need to be found trustworthy. And I know I have not been revealing a whole lot about who I am as a person. But I don't want the focus, I've never wanted the focus to be on me in all the years that I've been doing this. I've, I've tried to always make that clear. That it's not about me. It's about receiving the edification that's in the scriptures so that we can learn properly. This faith of ours is not, it's not, this faith that we share, excuse me, is not of ourselves. It's a gift. It came to me. I was called to it. I didn't, I wasn't raised or talked. It came to me. And it's pressed on me to share with you what I hear. And um, when I don't do that, there's consequences to it in my personal life. And, uh, sometimes it's painful. But let's begin. Revelation chapter 3 verse 14 says, To the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, the Amen, the faithful, the true witness, the beginning of the creation of God says this. He said the beginning of the creation of God. That is the Holy Spirit. That is the firstborn. That is how God created all of this. Because the Father cannot be contained within his own creation. So he does everything through the Spirit. And he places the spirit in the men that he has chosen. <clears throat> he says, I know your deeds, that you are neither cold nor hot. I would that you were cold or hot. So because you are lukewarm and neither hot nor cold, I will spit you out of my mouth. Because you say I am rich and I have become wealthy and I have need of nothing. And you do not know that you are wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. I advise you to buy from me gold refined by fire, that you may become rich, and white garments, that you may be clothed, that you may clothe yourself, excuse me, and that the shame of your nakedness may not be revealed, and I sell, to anoint your eyes that you may see. I advise you to buy from me, he says, gold refined by fire. This is the one-third that Malachi speaks of in chapter 3 that are refined. The fire is the Lord's word. That is the baptism that we partake of. Not the water baptism. 
but through the word, as Jesus said, the word you were already claimed through the word that I spoke to you. And as the prophet Jeremiah said, is not my as the Lord said through the prophet Jeremiah, is not my word like fire, like a rock, or like a hammer that crushes the rock. Those whom I love, he said, I reprove and discipline. Be zealous. I am a zealot. Therefore, in repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him. And I will dine with him and he with me. He who overcomes, I will grant him to sit down with me on my throne as I also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. The Spirit, the Holy Ghost, is making it clear that it is he who is speaking. If you hear his voice and you open the door, he will come into you and he will dine with you. On these words. You know, I used to have to pause these things after so many verses because my dog would snore in the background. And I used to get so frustrated with her and so angry and I'd lose my temper because I was trying to make these as perfect as possible. But I didn't realize she was listening all these years to what I was reading. Repent, therefore, or else I am coming to you quickly, and I will make war against them with the sword of my mouth. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To him who overcomes, to him I will give some of the hidden manna, and I will give him a white stone and a new name written on the stone, which no one knows but he who receives it. Did you hear what he said there? Repent, therefore, or else I am coming to you quickly, and I will make war against them with the sword of my mouth. The word of God is the sword. This is his sword. The sword of the Spirit. It judges our thoughts and our intentions. It cuts as far and as deep as the marrow over the bones in our soul. Repent, therefore, he said, for I am coming to you quickly, and I will wage war against them with the sword of my mouth. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, and has sent me to proclaim release to the captives, and recovery of sight to the blind, to set free those who are downtrodden, to proclaim the favorable year of the Lord. Jesus read those words because he was anointed by the Lord to do this, as all the prophets and apostles were. And I believe that I am also. But now, thus says the Lord your Creator, O Jacob, and Jacob is where the seed is called. That is where we are called. And he who formed you, O Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they will not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be scorched, nor will the flame burn you. For I am the Lord your God the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I have given Egypt as your ransom, Cush and Seba in your place, since you are precious in my sight, since you are honored and I love you. I will give other men in your place and other peoples in exchange for your life. Do not fear, for I am with you. I will bring your offspring from the east and gather you from the west, and I will say to the north, give them up, and to the south, do not hold them back. Bring my sons from afar and my daughters from the ends of the earth. Everyone who is called by my name and whom I have created for my glory, whom I have formed, even whom I have made. 
Bring out the people who are blind, even though they have eyes, and the deaf, even though they have ears. All the nations have gathered together in order that the peoples may be assembled. I think of the internet when I hear that. The world has been made such a smaller place because of the internet. We can all gather from all the continents all over the world now. Who among them can declare this and proclaim to us the former things? The ancient path where he said the good way is to walk in that, but many people don't listen. And they say they won't. Let them present their witnesses, that they may be justified, or let them hear and say it is true. You are my witnesses, declares the Lord, and my servant whom I have chosen in order that you may know and believe me and understand that I am he. My servant whom I have chosen, that is Jesus. Before me there was no God formed, and there will be none after me. I, even I, am the Lord, and there is no Savior besides me. It was our God and Father, who sowed his servant, Jesus Christ, in the womb of Mary by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is God. He sowed the prophet, the high priest, and apostle, and our king into Mary's womb. There is no Savior besides me, because God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten Son, as a sacrifice. Truly, truly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go to the Father. And whatever you ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask me anything in my name, I will do it, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may be with you forever. That is, the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it does not behold him or know him, but you know him because he abides with you and will be in you. And if the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ Jesus from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his Spirit who indwells you. As our Lord Jesus said, it is the Spirit who gives life, the flesh profits nothing. The words that he spoke to us, they are Spirit and they are life. Therefore accept one another, just as Christ also accepted us to the glory of God. For I say that Christ has become a servant to the circumcision on behalf of the truth of God to confirm the promises given to the fathers, and for the Gentiles to glorify God for his mercy, as it is written, Therefore I will give praise to thee among the Gentiles, and I will sing to thy name. Again he says, Rejoice, O Gentiles, with his people, and again praise the Lord, all you Gentiles, and let all the peoples praise him, and again, Isaiah says, There shall come the root of Jesse, and he who arises to rule over the Gentiles. In him shall the Gentiles hope. Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. He said, Rejoice, O Gentiles, with his people. For God has not given us a spirit of timidity, but of power and love and discipline, of sound mind. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And we all, with unveiled face beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as the Lord the Spirit. We are all made in God's image, just as Jesus was. 
For if you are living according to the flesh, you must die. But if by the Spirit you are putting to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are being led by the Spirit of God, these are sons of God. And because you are sons, God has sent forth the Spirit of His Son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. He said, If you love me, you will keep my commandments. But to keep these commandments and to put away these deeds in the flesh, it takes the Spirit to do. We can't do it on our own. It's impossible. As the Lord told the prophet Ezekiel, he said, Moreover, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you, and I will remove the heart of stone from your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes, and you will be careful to observe my ordinances. He said, I will cause you. That's against your will. That is him making you obey. Because again, you cannot do this on your own. The Lord said, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our abode with him. He who does not love me does not keep my words, and the word which you hear, he said, is not mine, but the Father's who sent me. These are gods to whom the word of God comes to. It says, Do you not know that you are a temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? You are the temple of God because the Spirit of God dwells in us. God does not dwell in temples made by a man's hands. Those are vanity. He dwells within his people and walks among in his people. But Jesus said, we will make our abode with him. We is plural, more than one. But God the Father is only one. This is the mystery. The Father creating everything through his firstborn, the Holy Spirit, which he gave to the prophet, high priest, and apostle, and our King, Jesus Christ, his servant whom he had chosen to rule over us. He is the vessel that the Holy Spirit dwells in as he dwelt in all the rest of the prophets and apostles. Do not quench the Spirit. Do not despise prophetic utterances. But examine everything carefully. Hold fast to what is good. Abstain from every form of evil. Do not despise prophetic utterances. Because through prophecy, a prophet edifies for the church, for the building up of the saints. Greater is he who prophesies than he who speaks in a tongue. See to it that you do not refuse him who is speaking, meaning the Holy Spirit. For if those did not escape when they refused him who warned them on earth, speaking of Noah, how much less shall we escape who turn away from him who warns from heaven? And his voice shook the earth then, but now he has promised, saying, Yet once more I will shake not only the earth, but also the heaven. And in this expression once more denotes the removing of those things which can be shaken, as of created things, in order that those things which cannot be shaken may remain. Therefore, since we receive a kingdom which cannot be shaken, let us show gratitude by which we may offer to God an acceptable service with reverence and awe. For our God is a consuming fire. And God is his word. So it should be no surprise if his word comes to you like fire. I urge you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies a living and holy sacrifice acceptable to God, which is your spiritual service of worship. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what the will of God is, that which is good and acceptable and perfect. 
The heavens are telling of the glory of God, and their expanse is declaring the work of his hands. Day to day pours forth speech, and night to night reveals knowledge. There is no speech, nor are there words. Their voice is not heard. Their line has gone out through all the earth, and their utterances to the end of the world. The law of the Lord is perfect, restoring the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true. They are righteous altogether. So then the law is holy, and the commandment is holy, and righteous, and good. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do weak as it were through the flesh, God did sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and as an offering for sin. He condemns sin in the flesh in order that the requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. As he said, those who are in the flesh cannot please God. However, you are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if the Spirit of God dwells in you. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God, and if children, heirs also, heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ, because God is the head of Christ. We are fellow heirs with him, sons, sons of God, just as he is the son. There are many sons. That's why he calls them brethren. If indeed we suffer with him in order that we may also be glorified with him, those who suffer will reign with him. We do speak wisdom among those who are mature, a wisdom, however, not of this age, nor of the rulers of this age who are passing away. But we speak God's wisdom in a mystery, the hidden wisdom which God predestined before the ages to our glory. The wisdom which none of the rulers of this age has understood, for if they had understood it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But just as it is written, things which the eye has not seen and ear has not heard, and which have not entered the heart of man, all that God has prepared for those who love him. And as it's written, we love him because he first loved us. He created us to love him. For God, or for to us, excuse me, God revealed them through the Spirit, for the Spirit searches all things, even the depths of God. This is why blasphemy of the Holy Spirit is unforgivable. Because if one who has received the Spirit and is revealing these mysteries to you, and you tell them that they are of, a, of the devil or they have an evil spirit, that's blasphemy and it is unforgivable. This is he who was in the beginning with God. All things came into being by him, and apart from him nothing came into being that has come into being. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it, nor did they still comprehend it. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being by him and through him, as I showed you, the Father created everything through the Holy Spirit. In him was life, it said. As the Father has life in himself, he is given to the Son also to have life in himself. And as the Father raises the dead, the Son also raises them whom he chooses. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. The firstborn of all creation, the beginning of the creation of God. It says he is the image 
of the invisible God. Something invisible does not have an image. The spirit is invisible. For by him all things were created, both in the heavens and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions, rulers or authorities, all things have been created by him and for him. Again, the Father created everything through the Spirit so that he could give it all to him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is also head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, so that he himself might come to have first place in everything. As the Lord himself said, God is a spirit, and those who worship him must, must worship in spirit and truth. God is spirit. God is his word. And as Jesus said, these words are spirit and they are life. This is where we worship. These things I have spoken to you while abiding with you. But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I said to you. I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the Helper shall not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And he, when he comes, will convict the world concerning sin and righteousness and judgment concerning sin, because they do not believe in me. And concerning righteousness, because I go to the Father, and you no longer behold me. And concerning judgment, because the ruler of this world has been judged. I have many more things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. But when he, the spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all the truth. For he will not speak on his own authority. But whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will disclose to you what is to come. These things I have spoken to you, that you may be kept from stumbling. This is the word of God. This is God. The Spirit of God. Finally, brethren, rejoice, be made complete, be conformed, be like-minded. Live in peace, and the God of love and peace shall be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all.